guys, it's Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge. Today we're reviewing this knife that I bought at GearBest. Surprisingly, GearBest doesn't write on there that this is a Stademan. They just show the picture. They have it in several different colors. Oh, itchy nose. Allergies. Uh, but this is a Stademan design. Uh, this is the A-01A BLU blue. Aluminum scales. Carbon fiber inserts, carbon fiber pocket clip. There's even a uh, carbon fiber insert in the blade. <laughs> quite interesting. Frame lock. Nice little knife. Quite light. Good. Um, might be a little too big because of its thickness for a purse knife. But my wife thought that she would really like this knife for her purse. And then when I got it here, she goes, did I ever really say that? She forgot about it. So who knows? I think I'm going to be willing to sell this knife on. Uh, we'll see when it comes time for me to do the big sale that I'm planning to do later on in early October. Uh, I need to sell a bunch of my knives, both because I just don't play with all of them or use all of them. And I need to raise a whole bunch more money for my mom for her cancer care. The expenses keep going up and up and, you know, like everybody else, I love my mother. So here we go. This is a nice saber grind. That's a big, high, flat grind knife. Stick around for the full review of this guy. First thing I want to say is this is a Stademan design knife, as it says right there on uh, the plunge of the blade right there. Made by Zahn Knives Company. A lot of Stademan's knives are. The uh, model is listed right there on the handle, A-01A, and there's the Stademan logo. Let's talk about the handle first. I usually talk about the blade first, but yeah, let's talk about the handle first on this guy. What do we have? We've got um, aluminum inset with uh, carbon fiber. We've got a, what am I going to call this? An open backspacer construction knife? Because the backspacer is very small. <laughs> so it's a lot like an open construction, but it's a backspacer construction. Uh, big hole back here for uh, paracord. And the thing that's really nice about that is it's just in the spacer. So any cord or stuff that you tie through there, it loops around. It's going to be more narrow than the handle of the knife. You know, usually when you've got a, lanyard hole and you put the paracord through it the paracord sits outside you know because it's got to come out and around makes it a little bit thicker so not on this guy carbon fiber pocket clip uh, one screw holding it in place there's a slight inset in the aluminum there so that it holds the pocket clip in that one position perfectly uh, one side only there's no other pocket clip for the other side. I really wish there was. When you've got something as nice as this, you know, it'd be good to have right and left hand, you know, designed for it. So there's the relief that's cut for the uh, frame lock. We've got a lock bar insert because aluminum will not last long. <laughs> you can just see a tiny little corner right there. I'll give you a close up shot of that. And the lock bar insert is also an over travel stop because it goes down underneath and so you can't move the lock bar too far out. Uh, really big pivot screws here, Torx on the inside. Everything else is Torx as well. There's no skeletonizing on the inside of these handle scales, but the skeletonizing takes place on the outside because carbon fiber is even lighter than aluminum. This is not a heavy knife. Now let's talk about the blade. The uh, blade steel on this knife, it has it written right there on the flipper tab right there. It just says 204P. That is the Carpenter CTS 204P. It's a high-end premium steel. It's a lot like M390, very similar to that. I was reading about it. Uh, apparently this steel is best if the cutting edge is at about 15 degrees per side, you get the best uh, performance out of it. Rockwell hardness goes up to 62. 
it's usually between 60 and 62 that most manufacturers put it. I don't know what Stademan got uh, Zon knives to do for this one for the hardness. But uh, there you go on the steel, and the performance uh, for this of this steel is excellent. Uh, we've got a straight back blade, a uh, swedge up here. So you can see all that. That looks nice. Little insert cut out for some carbon fiber on both sides. Some nice fine jimping on the spine of the blade right there. That helps give a little bit better grip to the knife. Really nice plunge line. Effectively a really good sharpener's choil there. It's a saber grind, all belly, really stabby tip right here because the, it's really thin on the spine up here. Nice tip, strong. Nice grind lines on there to make it look really, really nice. I like that a lot. And, uh, you know, that's about it for the looks. Let's talk about the lockup and the pivot. It flips super easy. You can do the light switch and it flies out very, very fast. You can do the uh, press down and it flies open as well. I don't think they needed to put that little bit of jimping on there on the flipper arm, but it's there. No blade play, nice and snug. There's bearings in there, up and down, side to side, no blade play. I'll show you a picture of the insides and those bearings as well. And uh, blade centering when the knife is closed is quite good. So there you go, that's the overview of it. Let's zoom in a little bit and do the dimensions. The cutting edge, 7.1 centimeters, 2.8 inches. The length of the blade, so from the tip of this handle to the tip of the blade is actually shorter, 6.2 centimeters, 2.45 inches. So it is definitely within the three inch laws that a lot of people have to live with. So that's a really good thing for a, a super nice little knife. The uh, blade thickness is 3.5 millimeters. That's 0.138 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind is superb. 0.51 millimeters. That's 0 0.0205 inches. Some guys would like it even less than that. But uh, for durability of a knife, for long-lasting uh, properties, I like it to be at about half a millimeter. If I get a really small knife that's like two inches or less of a cutting edge, then I like it even thinner than this, you know, 0 0.35, 0 0.4, whatever. I don't like to go lower than 0.35 millimeters, actually, generally speaking. Handle length is 10.2 centimeters, which is four inches. The grip area... 7.7 .7 millimeters, three inches. The handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip, 1.4 centimeters or 0.54 inches, just over half of an inch thick. The total length open for this knife is 16.3 centimeters, which is 6.42 inches. Weighs 100 grams, three and a half ounces. How much does this cost? In the U.S., there's a bunch of online stores like Blade HQ, Knives Plus, etc. They've got it for $149.90 something. Gearbest has this knife for $103.96 U.S., $128.15 Canadian, $87.11 for euros, and $77.11 for pounds. So you get a good discount for this, although you have to wait, you know, three, four, maybe five weeks, <laughs> hopefully not five weeks, but three, four weeks to get it. But for a lot of us guys, that savings of money is worth it. All right, let's talk about the pros and the cons on this before we do a little bit of a cutting demonstration. It flips really well. Great action. I just love how the action is so wonderful. You don't have to push hard at all to get that knife to go. Grip in the hand is really, really nice. It's easy to hold however you want to grip it. You can do one finger up just a little bit for some delicate work, but I don't really recommend it because you can't really get your finger in that well. Uh, great for a little pinch grip like this. You know, if you want to do some cutting like that, uh, you know, regular fist grip. My hand is large, borderline extra large, and I can get all four fingers grippy on there. 
So if you've got extra large hands, you will still get a good solid three finger grip on here. And if your hands are smaller, hey, this knife will fit all the better. I like how it's got a great depth here. This is over an inch, about three centimeters. And that really helps it to give a lot of control in your hand when you're using the knife. Um, styling, you know, there's not very many knives that look like this. So the styling cues, the points are really high for that. It's a special, unique knife. Some people aren't going to like the design that much. And if you don't like the design, don't buy the knife, right? There's so many great knives out there. So you can stick with uh, designs and styles that you really like. The lanyard option I already talked about. That's really nice. Blade shape is very efficient for cutting. Nice and thin. No thumb studs. So you can slice through stuff without it catching on anything. Flat section here to clamp on if you've got that kind of sharpener. That's all good stuff. I would like the price for a knife with aluminum handle scales to be more like 75 US dollars. You know, $150 US while well, cheaper at GearBest. I don't know if it's really worth that much, in my opinion. You, you're paying for the design. You're paying for the name Stedman or Stedman, however it's said. I'm not sure which is the right way to say it. I already talked about, I would like the pocket clip to have an option of an alternative pocket clip for the other side. I'm left-handed and right-handed. Um, there's a really good video that Zelrick did about uh, cross-dominant handedness, right and left-handedness, ambidextrousness, whatever you want to call it. And uh, he has a very strong opinion of how he likes his knives, and he doesn't like left-handed knives, although he is both left and right-handed. And a uh, really cool video about that. I'd uh, encourage you to watch that. It's in the description below uh, if you want to, to link to that thing. So there you go. Let's do some cut demonstrations. Let's try cutting some paracord. Here's some paracord. Just zips through that very easily. Uh, let's put something down here to uh, protect my surface. The belly on this, look at that, is so easy to slice because you've got the belly. And you can just push down to cut as well. This is nine strand paracord. Got a little bit of this one inch wide banding left. Zips through that very easily. It's a really nice knife. And then you've also got a tip to cut with. Cuts just great. No problems at all with having a good cutting edge. How does this knife look in the pocket with the pocket clip? We'll show you that. It slides in very well. You've got about a centimeter, a little over a quarter of an inch sticking out. Not much at all. You know, you got black and you've got this blue. It comes in a couple other colors, and I'll show you pictures of those. So there you go. That is the A-01A. On the internet, it's often written without the dash, just A-01A, and then it's got the letters for the color. Statement design made by Zahn Knives. I like this knife an awful lot, and it will probably be put on the uh, list of knives that I'm going to be selling sometime in the first half of October to raise some money for my mom's continued cancer care. If you'd like to make donations to my mom's cancer care, I'll put some links in the description below for that. A GoFundMe place, or you can send money directly to me. Thank you so much. Yes, I told you in a video a month or so ago that I was going to stop asking, and I've changed my mind. If you don't ask, you don't get. So, I'm not begging, I'm just asking those of you who'd like to help out with those expenses that my mother has, I thank you so much for that. Canadian healthcare in Canada is not as free as a lot of people think. So thanks for watching. Please like this video, even if you don't particularly like the knife. I think I did a pretty good review. Share this video with somebody who might be interested in these small, good quality knives. And uh, please leave a comment. Any kind of comment at all really helps. Thanks so much. Remember, always cut towards your chum. That's your friend, your buddy, your pal, and not your thumb. <laughs>